Summer Moon Utah Wells is still missing out of the Beech Creek community of Hawkins County since June 15, 2021. She was reported missing by her parents. She was reported missing initially as four years old, though she was five and three feet tall and 40 pounds. She's likely closer to four feet tall by now, now that she's seven years old and probably closer to 45 pounds if I had to guess but we don't know. Um, we would love to see an age progression photo of Summer. Her head was shaved at the time of her disappearance. It could be grown out now, um, or it could still be shaved. Um, if she was dressed as a boy, she would look like a boy, so keep a close eye out on her eyes. She has bright blue eyes. If her hair is grown out, she has straight blonde hair, so um, we must keep an eye out for her because she's out there somewhere, and if someone sees something, they have to say something. Call 1-800-TBI-FIND or email tips to tips to tbi at tn.gov. And please, if you know something, say something. So I'm going to hop right into it with Jose Roman. Jose Something Roman. Something I've noticed, and I know many of you have. This is a video from Evil Exists. Titled, New Dudley A. Jan, Grandus and Jose Roman were in a relationship. From Evil Exists, from April 15th, 2022.
you have noticed too. Because I saw it mentioned more than once in the comments, that Grandis says we came out. Not I came out of my camper, but we came out. Very interesting, especially hearing the new information that Dudley- So Grandis says we came out of the camper. So do you guys think she meant we came out of the camper? Like as in Tim Mullen and Don Wells say how would it, when they say we that it means I? Or do you think that they were as in we as in her and somebody else actually come out of the camper? Lee says about Grandis and Jose. Because according to Dudley, um, Jose was staying there. It being a couple. I'm starting to wonder if Grandis had some company in her. Says about Grandis and Jose being a couple. So Dudley says Grandis and Jose were a couple. I'm starting to wonder if Grandis had some company in her camper that day. That's news to me. The last I heard from Ali, Grandis tried to kiss Jose, but he wouldn't have it. So Ali says that Grandis tried to kiss Jose and he wouldn't have it. What do you guys think about that? Another interesting point is that Dudley said Jose got out of jail and went straight to Don's house. They got into some fight over Matt. So if if Dudley says that Jose was in jail somewhere near there, uh, I don't know where he says he was in jail at. I would assume that he would mean he was in jail somewhere around Rogersville, somewhere maybe in Kingsport area, um, because if he was staying with the wells and he did something to get in trouble down there maybe or maybe he went to jail somewhere else i don't know but i feel like we'd be able to figure that out if he was in jail somewhere around rogersville and maybe somebody already has figured that out but i don't know where he was supposedly in jail at and so when he gets out though dudley says that he comes back to the wells property now that was only days before summer went missing and it was only a few days before Summer went missing, according to Dudley. Summer went missing on June 15th, and that was a Tuesday. So, do we know if Don was in some sort of drug debt? Where and when did Jose Roman get out of prison? That will be a good point to start, since we can then corroborate Dudley's version. Share your thoughts in the comments. Yep, pretty much exactly what I was just saying, like... If we can corroborate it, then I guess we know. But if not, then we still just are left where we are now. We just don't know. Because he could have been in jail somewhere else. I don't know. Because why would Dudley lie about that? Unless maybe he has the wrong person. Which that could be. Now, this is the interview room with Chris McDonough and Josh from the lab talking to Jose Roman. And it was from, I think, let me let it play for a second because I show it on here when it was from. Um, from that point on, so what happened after that, after she introduced herself to you? Uh, not much, really. I. Um, I got to, uh, Andrew introduced me to, to Candace, to the grandmother and to Allie. I wound up meeting Hunter for the first time there. As so it was streamed 10 months ago. And anyone in the chat remember when it was exactly when Jose passed? As well. And Ali's youngest daughter, I met there. And we introduced ourselves and Andrew was explaining to them, you know, what I was going through with my divorce and, you know, and he's really having it rough. He needs help. He doesn't want to go back. And Candace was like, he can stay in my place. I got an extra room. And she even offered for all of them to stay, but they all said, no, they want. So Candace offered for all of these people to stay, and there was allegedly, what, like 14 people that went down there. So Candace obviously doesn't have trust issues, because why would she let these people all stay in her house where they don't even have enough for their own children, and they're going to let grown adults move in with them that have their own children as well, when they can't even take care of the children that they already have? wanted to go back 
And I was like, I'm just going to stay. I'm just going to rug it out, wait for my contract and go. That's it. So we wound up getting into the truck and we were just there. They drove. I'm just looking at the scenery and stuff. And uh, Hunter was next to me and Summer was leaning up on uh, on Hunter and he was on his phone. And then uh, Ali's youngest daughter was in the back seat as well. And I- so he seems to remember pretty well detail like he's going all the way back to when he very first went there and he remembers it pretty clearly and his head seems to be in a bad place at the time so you'd think that would be the blurriest of his memory because he was in such a bad place at the time that he would have at least tried to block those times out but um then he seems to not remember when it's convenient for him and what for whatever reason and that's what reason we're trying to figure out i was pinched up to the door and then the three candid her mother and ali were in the front of the truck and that's where they sat and they was just asking me you know what kind of work i did and things like that just i guess getting to know me You there, Chris? You might be having some. Uh... And did you had you seen the house prior to to them inviting you? No, I didn't see the house prior. No. And my first impression was they were nice. That was my first impression. And, you know, and Andrew and Andrew kept telling them, you know, he's really going through a lot, you know. Try- so this was March 27th of 2022 when this was streamed. It'd be easy with him, you know, and he was explaining to them about, you know, me trying to commit suicide and all of that. So they knew. Already, Trigger warning. You know, before I entered the home, my my personal problem already. And Andrew was like, you know, he just doesn't want to go back because he doesn't want to feel like that anymore. And they were like, it's understandable. And, you know, Ali was, that's why I left Gloversville. You know, it was too depressing over there. So I moved down here, you know, and that's what she wound up doing. And I was like, oh, okay. And, and and Chris, just to catch up to speed, if you didn't hear, I, I asked him uh, his first his initial impression to out front meeting everybody. And did we get that? So did you guys already cover that? You no, know, and they were telling me that you know I had my three children. I shouldn't be thinking like that, you know, because eventually my children might need me, you know, when they're older. You know, that's the way they were talking to me on the ride home. Because I was just sitting in the back and I just began to cry, you know, because I'm in a truck and I don't know none of them. It's the first time I ever met them, you know, so it kind of felt uncomfortable a little bit. So he seems like a nice, that he was a nice enough guy, okay? But the thing is, he was using them for a place to stay because he had no, he seems like he had nowhere else to go because he was going through this divorce and what, for whatever reason, um, his ex didn't want him there. So he needed somewhere to go. So he was using this as an excuse to get out of there and have somewhere to go. Um, I don't know what happened with him and his ex. That would be really interesting to know though. Mm-hmm. But I, was, I started crying, you know, and uh, and whose Hunter truck? Had said something in uh, Candace's mother's truck. Okay. And Hunter had turned. Uh, is that the Silverado? Like, okay. Yes. It is um. And Hunter had, yeah. He he started the the initial conversation. And he's like, Jose, you all right? You know. And that's when, while Candace was driving, she had turned back real quick and looked at me. And she had told 
her mother and out that I was crying in the back and they're like, what's wrong? You know, and I was just talking, telling them what was going through my mind and stuff, you know? And they were like, it's hard. We know it, you know, but you got to try to stay focused and things like that. So. So the way he tells it makes it sound like Candace and Allie, and I think it was uh, Grandma that was with him. He's, or maybe it was Allie's mother. I don't know. I kind of missed on that part there. I guess I zoned out for a second or something and missed uh, what he said. But I couldn't tell if he's if he's saying Grandis was there, or if he was because I know they were in Grandis's truck. But if Candace was driving it, it was Grandis that was with them, right? They seemed real nice. And around what time in the evening was this? I don't even. He makes them sound like good people. He makes them sound like good hearted people that cared, that just wanted to help. Right? That's what he makes them sound like. even remember okay that's cool i honestly i honestly don't remember that's that's cool so at some point do you make it up to the the house up there yeah and what was your your... Hmm? Uh, my first was the driveway (laughs) that that driveway is something isn't it Oh my lord! <laughs> so and and it it was crazy because Candace tried to go up and just just one of the many hazardous things on the property being the driveway, because we know we've heard stories of summer running up and down that driveway, and um, I think that alone was dangerous. But I think she was probably pretty good at it by the time she was five years old. I'm just saying there was a lot of um, hazardous obstacles around that property, especially around the area by our swing. If you would have went off the edge right there, it just, it makes my stomach turn to think about, but there was a lot of hazardous areas on their property. Silverado and, and the tail kept kicking sideways. And, um, her mother yelled at her, didn't I tell you, you got to put it in four wheel drive. And hearing that, I'm like, what? We need four-wheel drive to make it up this driveway? Because I expected a paved driveway. I wasn't expecting a driveway like that, you know? Like, just put pedal to the metal. Like, it was, and the lawnmower was sitting there. And they were saying, yeah, Hunter is supposed to be doing that. And he's like, yeah, but that's a lot, you know? And he was right. It really was a lot. And he was like, and I was like, you know what? I'm not doing nothing, so I can help. So Hunter was supposed to be doing their lawn, apparently, according to Jose. I wonder how close Hunter really was with the family. I'm just curious, like, how often he was really there, because I wonder often if he came back with them that day and if that's what they're hiding, because to me, it seems like Allie... <clears throat> is hiding something and I don't know what it is but it seems like it's not something in regards to Summer being gone it's possibly something in regards to protect her son maybe they went on like a drug run or something and she doesn't want people to know about it because she didn't want to lose custody of him or something along those lines maybe is what I was kind of thinking help if you want a little help and he was like yeah that'll be great i was like yeah why not because it'll keep my mind off of things just trying to keep my mind busy so um we wind up pulling up and then i remember seeing uh candace mother's camper and the fridge and then they had a couple of other things like tires and things like that like in a little pit or something and uh candace was saying once in a while that 
So we know they keep a lot of extra junk around. I guess a lot of people do that in the country. I mean, people just keep extra junk around, but they also said were said to keep, have a bunch of TVs in the back of Grandma's truck. I thought that was weird. Why would you have a bunch of TVs in the back of your truck? You know what I'm saying? Oh, they'll light that up and burn trash there during the nighttime. Nobody would tell, you know, with the black smoke and things like that. And um, as we get to the house, all I can remember where these dogs just swarm the, the truck and they just barking. And I'm just looking at them like, oh, and, you know, Hunter's laughing at me. He's like, oh, they, they're all punks, they, you know, but he didn't say it like that. He said a bad word, but he was like, they all bark and no bite. <laughs> and then Candace was like, that's funny because they know you. They don't know Jose, you know? And I was like, oh, man, I might get bit by one of these dogs. They're like, y'all like the dogs to leave me alone. Um, so you, um, then in from the, there. Jose, who's mm -hmm. in the truck with you? And, and then like, and then in the back seat, it was uh, Summer Hunter, Hunter's sister, and me. Okay. Uh, and then, like, yeah. In the in the Who's truck in with me, it was a. Uh, okay, so in the front seat, it was a, uh, Candace, her mother, and Ali. And then. Okay, so it was Grandma. It was Candace and Grandis and Allie. Because the way he worded it earlier, it made it sound like it was Allie's mom. And I was like, what? Wait, what? That's why I said something earlier. And then in the back seat, it was uh, Summer Hunter, Hunter's sister, and me. Okay, where, where were the boys? If you knew. At home. Not later, fact. later on, if you found out later. So it seems like the boys were just kind of left home alone a lot, which I think um, a couple of them were probably old enough for that. I would be kind of afraid to leave all three of them there alone with Summer there. I wouldn't like the idea of that just because the property is too dangerous. And if they got outside and got too wild playing and nobody was there to help them if some accident happened, you know, which a lot of people think is possibly what happened. But we're just trying to figure out if that is the case, why would they not call 911, you know? Yeah, they were at home. Okay. So That's what they you were. Pulled... When you pulled up, were the boys there? Yes. They were in the house, and, actually. And... Okay, and where did you guys park? Uh, she parked like right next to, uh, right next to the house, but a little after the porch. Okay. And when you got out, the dogs obviously did their thing. Uh, mm -hmm. What happened next? Uh, we got out. Um, hunters took summer out. They all got out and they all started walking in the house. They asked me if I needed any help with my luggage. I was like, no. I just picked it. I, I was able to carry it on my own. And I took it, and they was like, don't be afraid of the dogs, because that was my main fear, that they were going to bite me. Look like a scaffold-type deal there for, like, you know, for you to hold with your hand. And I saw that, and I was like, that's dangerous, you know, especially with kids. You know, and she's like, yeah, my husband is doing work around the house. We're going to fix this eventually. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I just climbing up the stairs, and I remember walking through that front room, and all you can see is it, just wreck everywhere, clothes all over the place, cups, uh, empty water bottles, soda bottles, just on, on top of the tables, um, the TV stand, movies piled up. And then they had two uh, clean-sized mattresses laid out on the floor, and those had the pillows and blankets, plus a couple. So it doesn't really sound that much different than when Chris McDonough was there. So that's why I'm just saying I think that they were lying when they said the only reason their house looked like that was because it got turned upside down by TBI. Because it sounds like it looked like that all along. And from pictures that I've seen that have summer in them, it looks that way still to me. 
and pictures from when Jose was there. But Jose supposedly said he helped them clean the house and he helped them keep things picked up because he didn't think the kids should have to live like that. But I don't think he did uh, as much as he could have done personally, but... A couple of the kids' clothes was there. They had a, in what a rooms, like, makeshift. In what, rooms were those in what rooms were those mattresses, Jose? The first room when you enter. Okay. Yeah. How many, how many mattresses? It, and it how was many mattresses? Mattress, it was two. Okay. okay. And right next to each other. All right. Were there bunk beds there at that time? No, absolutely not. Okay. Then, then what happened? Uh, this is the first time you go in, me to, right? Yes. Then they were telling me to come into the kitchen. Who was telling and then, you? Know, you know, uh, Ali, Candace, and the grandmother, they were like, come in, come into the kitchen, come sit down. We're not going to bite, you know, like they were laughing, you know, just. <clears throat> so he sounds like he was like the shy one. Like he, he was afraid to come in and get comfortable and sit down. Like he was being the shy one and grandma and Candace were the ones that were like, oh, come on in, sit down, come on, let's hang out and chill and have a drink and do whatever. Cracking jokes and stuff. And where I was already depressed, though. Right. Running okay. around. Summer went right to, well, Summer went straight to the swing, uh, and the boys was outside with her, and they were there just playing. Okay. And, was um, it daytime then? Yeah, it still was daytime. Okay. And that and I do so remember. You... Okay. Then what happened? Uh, then I went into the kitchen with them. They cleared out the table a little bit, and I had sat down. I had asked for water. They had given me water. And then I was like, oh, could I use your bathroom? And they was like, yeah. And then that's when Ali had told Hunter to show me where it was, you know, to take me to the bathroom. So that's when I wound up getting up. You walk past that little bar thing that they have. And right there, there was these two big six straw dressers, one on top of the other with a sheet over it. So they didn't have a door for their bathroom. And they were going to somehow try to accommodate um, over a dozen people to let them come stay at their house when they didn't even have a door for their bathroom. And they were going to let Little Summer, and she was even younger than five then, but she was big enough that she was running around and all these kids that were going to have to use the potty too and the shower and everything in this bathroom with no door with all these adults living there. I don't think so. I don't like the idea of that at all. And I wonder how often they did that for other people. And Hunter was like, the bathroom's right here. And he just pointed. So I go and when I look, it's just the toilet, the shower and the sink, no walls, no doors at all. And I was like, whoa. And they were like, oh, don't worry. Nobody's going to go back there, you know? And I was like, okay. So I just wound up using the bathroom. And I'm just standing there like, where's the wall at? There's no door, you know? And then I noticed the water tank heater that they had up in the ceiling and the pipes coming from the ceiling and stuff. And I just started to observe, you know, just to look around and stuff. And then I noticed their closet. I used to live in a trailer um, that was like outside of the outskirts of town and it was an old, old trailer and the woman that was my landlord was the nicest woman ever. She was like 93 years old and that trailer ended up getting torn down like right after I moved out of it after living there for a couple of years, but it had piping on the inside and I think it was like that, so it didn't freeze, I guess. And all the clothes that was there, they had a, a, a BB rifle there laying up against um, the sink in the closet. Um, 
I used the bathroom, turned right back around and came right back to them. And I didn't even notice the stairs at this time yet, you know, because I just walked right back. And then I was like, can I put my stuff away? Because the kitchen was clustered already. And I had a pretty big suitcase with me. And that's when Candace was like, yeah, come with me. And I was like, okay. And then I seen her walk to the bar. And I'm like, there's stairs there. And she's like, oh, yeah, my husband's six foot, you know, he fits down here. Same thing, basically what she told you. If he could. Can you imagine how depressing it would be to be in the situation that Jose was in to where you'd feel like you're taking every little thing that you take out right out of the mouths of those children because you can see they don't even have a rug to step on in their bare feet or a blanket to sleep with at night and you're just coming in there and taking even more away from the little that they have, like the, the way that would feel as a person doing that would must feel really um bad i can't imagine how depressed he had to have been I sit down here so can you and but i'm wise you know i'm a hefty guy and i'm like oh my god and then hunter was like my mom fits through there you know we all do and i was like okay so that's when i have walked down there down those steps and my sure my the jacket i had on it had caught on one of the nails it didn't rip it though but it got caught on one of the nails and then uh, Ali's young and you know and he's really having it rough he needs help he doesn't want to go back and Candace was like he can stay in my place I got an extra room oh, man. about 10 years now if I'm wrong okay you and Candace have been friends for about a year From my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay, you and Candace have been friends for about a year, year and a half, about maybe. A year, about a year and a half. Okay. And this is right after you relocated here from New York. Okay. So. This is the uncut interview with Allison, Hunter, Leslie, great grandma. Summerwell's case, the interview room. No, no, right. it's no. been a few years. After we, we, we've been here from New York for about, since about, about 10 years now. So this was uploaded January 6th of 2022, but that's obviously not when it was filmed. It was filmed right after Summer went missing um, within the first couple months after she went missing. Okay. Okay. Um, in that time, help me understand what that the dynamics of that relationship between you guys sherry my mother started the friendship she had not Candace. i feel like ali's grandma um is just people think it's like a red flag that she keeps like answering questions for her but i feel like she's just trying to make sure that she gets it right because she feels like chris mcdonough's law enforcement or something or either that or she just wants to kind of be a part of it maybe i guess what i'm saying is it doesn't stand out as like a red flag necessarily to me and the kids and her mom down here at the Santa Train. And you have a good Irish name. Thank you. I'm McDonough. Santa Train. Okay. And then she slowly introduced Candace to us and her mother. Okay. So that you're in. It does kind of raise a little bit of an eyebrow that she keeps confirming, like, yeah, you're saying it right. 
because it makes me feel like she wants to make sure that she keeps her story straight and there's a reason for that and it could be because she knows something about hunter and i'm not trying to let anybody bash hunter or talk badly about hunter and i'm not going to i'm just saying he was there that day on june 15th the day that summer disappeared and he's technically you'd think would be considered a suspect because he was with them. We just don't want to say that because he was a minor and his parents should be responsible for him. So technically we look at his parents, right? I do. And I feel like maybe there might be something going on, but I, I just feel in my heart that Hunter didn't do anything to Summer. And I feel like he might have seen some things that he, as a minor, probably still knew were wrong but didn't have the responsibility technically to report it because he was technically a kid but maybe as he's growing older he's starting to feel a little bit guilty about these things i don't know but i feel like <clears throat> maybe he might come out one day and say you know a little bit more as he gets older but it could also just be that they went on like a drug run or something and Allie just doesn't want anybody to know about it. So they're trying to keep the story at this one simple thing. Does that make sense? Like they're trying to stick to their script, I guess you would say. Her introduction to Candace was through your mom. Yes. Okay. And um, what was your first impression? You're next. Yeah. I see you're begging. That I was just still looking for all. How much time do you think it applies? Okay. Well, you hear pain pills. Um, Opioids? Like oxygen? That pain patch. They said on the news the other day that it's running rapid here. Fentanyl? Yeah, the fentanyl patch. Yeah. Yeah, well, here in West Virginia, right? I mean, there was West Virginia. There's a town in West Virginia. Uh, I think it's Morgan's Morgantown, and they had like 22 people OD on fentanyl in a single day. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Um, so, at some point, three. Or fentanyl is really bad around a lot of places. It's bad in Ohio where I'm from. It's bad down there in Tennessee. I'm sure it's bad in a lot of places where a lot of other people are from too. And I really hope Hunter wasn't messing around with that stuff. Three or four months into it, correct me if I'm wrong, okay, your relationship kind of dissolved, but it maintained. It was longer than that. It was it was the start of the second year. Yeah. It was about, it was about the end of August, early September. Okay. And then I really thought I was at the end of September, early October. In that time, how was she treating the children? She'd smack them and beat them. When, describe that. Well, let's see. One time her son wanted a drink. She said no. He threw a foot on the floor, so she went over and wailed his ass. Okay, so trigger warning on this, sorry, but um, I don't know what her definition of beating a kid's ass is, but my definition is not spanking them. That would be like, yeah, maybe they got their butt whooped, which I don't think, I, I mean, I'm not cool with that. I'm not down with that, but I think that by her definition, beating your child would be whooping their butt. And a lot of people might see it differently. So I think that's why Chris was asking her to clarify on that. Is that normal? Would you describe that as a mom from your mom's position? Would that be out of the norm or even that raise your eyebrows? It raised my eyebrows. Like, I, don't, I don't beat my kids. Okay. Did you say anything to her? I said, what you do? Ask her to unplug the freezer. Not me. What holes unplugged? Now we can't have these. Should I ask Leslie? Because Leslie was there before all this. So you've known Candace longer? No. Oh. No, I met Candace on her birthday. See, me and her work together. Okay. So I brought, I came over for her birthday party. Is it true that Leslie was a nurse? Because that's what I always heard, but I don't know if it's true. Thank <laughs> you. 
and they had a swimming pool up out back as a little swimming pool and her kids and Candace's kids was playing in the pool and some of the kids had got out he was eating a snack while he was cooking hamburgers and stuff and two of her boys was in the pool and they was horse playing and this really what she done was really got to me okay i mean their kids they're going to play in the pool right they're going to get rough you know they're boys right and because they got rough of course playing in the pool she made them get out and back here behind the house there's a driveway and she made the two boys get out of the pool wet and lay down stomach down on black top Now, for her to just lie about this and make this up would be um, pretty drastic. That's a pretty wild accusation or, you know, just to make about somebody um, that wouldn't be for no reason. There's got to be a reason why Leslie would make something like that up if it's not true. Uh, I don't see why she would just lie about that. And um, if that's true, Candace, wow, that is pretty messed up. It was hot. Really hot. That left an impression with you. It left an impression so bad. I looked at her and Allison's mom, Sherry. I said, I do not like this bitch. Straight up. Mm -hmm. And I told Allison, I said, this swimming pool is going down. I said, those kids did not deserve that. Mm -hmm. But she sounds very serious, doesn't she? She sounds like she means what she's saying. Like, she doesn't sound like she's lying. She's articulate. She's flowing with her words. She's looking Chris in the eye. She's, like, talking with her hands like she really means it. So, I don't know. She's gone now, too. I walked out, picked a swimming pool up, and dumped it. Turned around and walked back in the house. I did not want to be around her the rest of the evening. I didn't, because if I would have been, honestly, I would have went to jail. Right. And you want to ask me how I felt about that? That is abuse. Those children could have got seriously burnt. Right. No, I agree. I agree. That if, if that ground is, is just unbelievably hot. And with them being wet. Right. Yeah, it's right. Me helping the kids well, move the forward. Tables, all they would eat is dollar pizza. So, Allie supposedly was buying the kids food on a daily basis. And at one point, she was supposedly staying there. So, <clears throat> she was buying them food on a daily basis. And according to her, and because all they were eating was frozen pizzas. Pizzas. How did they get, how do they, how, how do they have the cars that they drive? That kind of stuff. The ones that are on the property, see, I only knew that at first, when I first saw them, I only knew that Candace had a green suburban. Donnie had a black truck, which Candace had sold. When she came back from a trip from Wisconsin, she sold her husband's truck. Because he took his white truck with him to Utah. Okay. And there's other trucks on the, there's other trucks on the property too that were not sold yet. There was a blue one that used to sit as you came out the front door. It used to sit right in the yard. Okay. Next to the tree where the swing was. Okay. That's been moved. So I'm not sure that it necessarily matters what trucks were moved where because. I know the TBIs had to have searched that property, like, inside and out, right? Moved over by the mother's truck. Since the incident? Get it right, the mother's camper. Well, the mother's camper, I thought it was really. uh, From what I've seen in the pictures, uh, it's been moved over. My That's four children. Yes, ma'am. Our eldest child was murdered in my driveway. Okay. Yes, ma'am. My sister has four children. Yes, ma'am. So listen closely. Leslie's sister has four children, she says. 
our eldest child who was murdered in Nebraska. Okay. Her oldest child was murdered in her driveway. And he was just like my son. So where was this? At my house. No, no, no. Where, where? What city? Kingsport. Okay. Did they catch the guy? Okay. I was The only reason I asked you, I was going to say maybe we can help. I mean, it sounds like you got him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He was got 45 minutes after he killed him because I chased him down. See, your heart is pure, Miss Leslie. My daughter called me and she said, Mom, you have to get back here. You have so this uh, guy came and murdered her, um, a child that was like a child to her. That was her nephew, but it was like a child to her, she says. And it happened at her house. And she chased the guy down and the guy got caught. I have to get back here. And when I pull back at my driveway, uh, like this association against uh, sex traffic and abused children. So you're in the back seat. Connor gets out. He tells you what? He really didn't say nothing. He didn't say nothing. They went in the house. Okay. Then what happened? I had some office and wanted to go for the for me. Oh, okay. And I asked him how they were legal signs. He didn't tell me anything about what happened. Nothing. Nothing. And then his girlfriend's mom came and picked him up. About three o'clock. Okay, so do you really think it's true that Hunter didn't say anything? I think that's kind of odd if he really just said nothing at all. Um, you think he would have said something like, hey, how's it going? We just went and did this, blah, 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 whatever. Otherwise, it sounds like it was something that they went and did that he wouldn't want his mom to know about. And that's why he wouldn't say anything. Because why else would you not say hi to your mom? Because they seem close, in my opinion. And he went with it for a while. Me and Leslie went to the ball field. I left my phone in her car and her van. Because my phone was dead. So we only had hers. We were on the ball field. And we were actually on the opposite side of the ball field. We were watching him, her grandson practice. Because he was playing for the Packers at that time. And uh, my phone, her phone rang. Go to Hunter. He wanted to speak to me. She gave me the phone. He goes, Mom, you gotta call Candace. Where was Hunter at? I don't know why, but if there's any part that I feel like Allie's lying about, there's something weird about this part here, and I'm not even sure quite what it is. It's just the way she acts when she talks. And I think maybe she might be leaving some things out to make herself look good. I don't know. At when he called you, he was at his girlfriend's house. At his girlfriend's house. That's with Leslie. No, no. Oh, I thought her name was Leslie too. His girlfriend's name is. Uh, That's okay. I don't need his girlfriend's no, name. Yeah, I don't need his girlfriend's name. Yeah, good so call. Thank him. you. And he goes, Candace just called me. Summer's missing. You need to call her. I said, boy, stop pulling my leg. I don't want to talk to her. So, me and Leslie were talking. I said, I don't believe it. I said. Just tell him I'm trying to get me to talk. So, so, you know, we continue watching football practice. After practice, we went to the drive through at the cookout. Now, were you guys together? Yes. Okay. We went through the cookout drive through because we had ordered dinner. And we were waiting for our food. I turned my phone on, went on Facebook. There it is, plain as day. A, summer, a picture of someone missing that was posted by Hawkins County EMS. I said, listen. Oh, shit. Oh, and hi. Huh? We. Okay, so like she'd smoke marijuana? Yep. Okay. Uh, detective Leslie, Miss Leslie, what do you think that you've seen? It wouldn't have put it past me if she hadn't done a couple of pain pills. Some pain pills? Yeah, because, I mean, she was, her moods would go like this during the whole, sure. inter, during the whole time she was talking to me. Sure, sure, sure. And, I mean, whenever she would, it was just like she was up like this, and then you could watch her just... You know, just down yeah, highs and low. Right. So what do you think? Do you think that Allie has more information than she's leading on and that she's leaving things out to make herself look good? 
Um, and if so, what do you think those things are? Like possibly knowledge of things of Summer's life before what that weren't right that she should have reported. Um, maybe she leaves out a little bit more. She doesn't like to talk about when she supposedly stayed at the Wells home. She doesn't like to talk about that time of her life. She just likes to talk about the reasons why she doesn't like Candace. So I'd like to know more about her life when she was living with the Wells and what her children's life was like then and um, compared to what it's like now. And I hope it's better now because I'm sure it couldn't have been great then. Um, just judging on the circumstances and what they would have had to live with. Um it couldn't be fun living with Don Wells. I'm sure that probably wasn't a great time. And I always wondered on that topic if Don was even supposed to be living there because of CPS. If CPS was coming and going all the time, then um, they might have been saying, you know, on the down low about why they were living there uh, because of CPS. Like, so Jose might have just been trying to lie about the length of time that he stayed there because if cps showed up not long before summer's disappearance then maybe he was trying not to let anyone know that he lived there because of that i don't know but i still have a lot of questions um my brain's just a little fried right now but i do want to know what happened to leslie and i want to know what happened to jose and why they are gone and i want to know where summer moon utah wells is i'm going to Chat usually has a lot of thought-provoking things to say, so I'm curious what people are going to have to say on this one. That's the best part about doing this, to hear what everybody else has to say. All right, it's about to hit an hour and it's pre-recorded, so I'm going to have to end it. And thank you all for being here. I appreciate you and I appreciate what everybody has to say. Summer Moon Utah Wells is still missing from the Beach Creek community of Hawkins County, Tennessee. It's been almost going on two years now and we still have no answers. It would be nice if the suspects could be named publicly. 
um, I think we as the public deserve to know, but if it's for the integrity of the investigation that we don't know, then I think it's better that we don't. But it would also be nice to know that they have something so that we know it's not going to be a cold case once it hits that year mark to where it is supposed to technically be a cold case. I would love to know that they have something to keep it from going cold. Um, we all know that they claim that they're working on the case and that they're following up on it on almost a daily basis, but we want to know that they've found something. Um, all right. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for being here for summer.